It was basically birthed out of love. When I joined, it was pretty small back then. I think it was maybe like 50 people that came out a night. It was 50 teams. Though. I know. Like, just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. This tiny little night that they thought no one would really come to. Come about two hours early so you can get a table and you're not standing all night because standing sucks. It's more intense than I think people anticipate. It's the closest thing I get to a sport. It's extremely personal to a lot of people. You know, kind of a home for them. Sometimes it's pretty sweet knowing the answer to something that is so unbelievably obscure that you don't even remember why you know it. I learned really, really quickly that the knowledge level was going to be insanely high. But we still didn't do that well just because questions were so hard. We had a question once where it was um, when Reverend Lovejoy saves Ned from the baboons in the train, Baboon County, USA, what was the name of the sermon the next day at church? And the whole room went silent. And the host even said, I love that sound. Welcome to Woohoo Classic Simpsons Trivia here at the Cadillac Lounge. Uh, actually, whenever people have said, should I go to that, the first thing I ask is, what does Mr. Burns say when he answers the phone? Ahoy, hoy, everybody! And if they can't answer that, I'm like, yeah, it's not for you. So Woohoo's Classic Simpsons Trivia started in Toronto by Andrew and Amanda. We would always have these sort of online conversations that would always just devolve into a a series of Simpsons quotes. Do you know the answer to this? Hey, do you know the answer to this? And basically doing trivia between the two of them. And uh, one day we, she said, well, why don't we make that into an event? So we'll show three episodes and we'll have questions about this. And then if you win, you get donuts and you get to eat donuts. And who doesn't love donuts? This team was started by a man named Sean Bernstein as a way to pay off his gambling gag. Can I do that again? It's a couple days before trivia, so we usually try to get together. We're here today at Amber's place, and we're going to watch a couple episodes of The Simpsons to prepare for next week's trivia. <laughs> I mean, we treat it as like a study session, pretty much. I'll see a sign, that I'm like, wait, what did that say? And rewind it and pause it and write it down, and then like, god damn, this is sad. I never noticed that before, even though I've seen the episode probably 300 times. All right, last round, everybody, are we ready? More importantly, are you guys having fun? Yeah. Chris used to be the one at the front of the room. Like, she always was the first person in the room, and she was always the loudest one. Before I even knew her, I'm like, oh, it's the loud redhead again. So Chris was on a team that won a lot. So I knew she had the knowledge, and she was also the most vocal member of the, of the team. So I knew she was not going to be shy. He was doing the show solo for a while, and uh, my team kept winning. At which point, Andrew said, screw this, and made her a host. It's actually a relief not having to compete with her. Her knowledge of The Simpsons is beyond what I've ever seen in any human being. She can yell, of course. We all know that. Front room, I can barely hear myself up here unless you guys want me to get louder. No, 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 no. She was really shrill at first. Ah! Occasionally, she can get kind of loud. Ah! She just needs to not yell into the microphone. Oh! just kind of sounds like she's screaming. You guys just really like the sound of my voice for some reason. She's toned it down a little bit in volume, but uh, she's, she's a good host. She probably spends, you know, 20 or 25 hours, like, per month just trying to put together all of these questions. Could be a full-time job. I remember Evan and Amanda used to complain about it. Like, it got too much for them at a time. You know, she binge watches Simpsons on DVD over and over and over again. I will sit down every other night and I will just write and write and write. I will pause, rewind, review, freeze frame something to see what a sign gag is. And I will just keep writing and writing and writing and writing and writing new questions. We didn't repeat a question, I don't think, for the first two and a half years. And that was a constant challenge. Uh, it seems like an incredibly daunting task. Um, it kind of is. You can't get away with anything because there are people out there in the audience who know as much or more than, than you as a host. It's happened so many times that people are like, no, but Homer did this, and people will shout, or people come running up after the round's over, it's like, look, look, this is the answer, this is the answer, say, you were wrong, and it's like, whoa, okay, you can have your half a point, all right, fine, <laughs> whoa, come down. I mean, to come up with just the trivia portion of it must be insane, much less getting the prizes together. I can't even imagine. Like, Chris goes to, like, Comic-Con, and, and she goes out and sources, like, uh, vintage action figures and, like, uh, uh, limited action figures, all this stuff. I'm running around and doing all this work, and then some people still come up to you and like, oh, you know, these 
you know, these prices aren't good. I'm like, no, really, do you know how much? Go on eBay, do you know how much this is worth and how much I actually spent on this? I would walk away every fan expo having spent three to four hundred dollars on prizes. And that's why there's a, <laughs> a mountain of boxes in my apartment. Tom Jones, I'm Krabs! That's another reason why Chris is a great host is because she, she you know, happens to be one of those people who's naturally drawn to memorabilia, to merchandise. It's a yeah, it's a part-time job, but it's a really fun part-time job. I don't, I don't hate it. I, I love, I love doing it. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't love doing it. That's one of the reasons I went to the very first one. It's like I'm in a room of people who get it. If there's that sense of community, then y you can't be upset that like maybe your team didn't do that well. You, you don't need to know who bred Laddie, Major Jonas Fong, ALBDA. You know. Come out, come out and watch it. Have a good time. Have a beer. Have a Duff beer. It's fun. I haven't lived in Toronto for very long. It's probably going on about four years now. But this is the only place that I've ever felt that I can actually almost call home because everyone shares the same interest and the same passion that I do. Hunting doesn't mean anything to me. Going to an air show doesn't mean anything to me, but it means a whole lot to people who do those things. So that's this is our thing. Everybody understands each other. We can, like... Speaking Simpsonese. You haven't experienced Simpsons until you've seen 300 people spontaneously burst into We Do. We have 150 people showing up in Ottawa. We've got 200 in Brooklyn. We've got Vancouver and Calgary and Hamilton and all these other places. And it's done really well everywhere it's everywhere it's been. Oh, it just feels so good to know you're not alone in loving something that seems you know, everyone thinks a cartoon is so childish. Like, only kids watch cartoons. I'm like, no. There's a whole bar full of grown-ups watching a cartoon and reciting all of the lines, and it just feels... It feels so good to know you're not alone in your fandom. People will say we're crazy, but, you know, that's fine. Highlight of the night for me is always hearing the team names. Bonjour, you cheese-eating surrender monkeys. The Sector 7 Gs. Uh... This team is hatless. I repeat, hatless. We won, we won. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't go out for pizza because I bet on the Nelsons. The one that, the one, the one that, uh, the one that... The ninth period in infantry. Stupid Lisa garbage face. Like when new teams almost always call themselves Team Discovery Channel or Worker and Parasite. There was one night here where we had three Worker and Parasites, or the suckiest bunch of sucks who ever sucked, or the Rand Corporation in conjunction with the reverse, uh, the sausage people under the uh, supervision of the reverse vampires. Hello, Mr. Annals. Us bad want donuts now. We sick. It's like, oh, it was like, um. 